1 Peter 4 verse 11, delivers a strong message about how Christians should conduct themselves in their words and deeds. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. This verse, though brief, carries significant weight in its call for Christians to live out their faith in both speech and service. Let's explore the verse's context, meaning, and how it can shape our actions and conversations. Peter's Letter to a Persecuted Church 1 Peter was written to early Christians experiencing persecution. Scattered across the Roman Empire, they were living in uncertain and difficult times. Peter's letter was meant to encourage them, reminding them to stand firm in their faith despite their hardships. Chapter 4 speaks directly about how Christians should live with the understanding that the end is near and that their actions and lives should reflect their faith. Verse 11 falls within this broader instruction, particularly emphasizing how believers should use their gifts for the benefit of others and the glory of God. For Peter, living as a Christian meant that every action, whether speaking or serving, should be done with purpose and excellence, as if for God himself. Speaking as God's representative. The first part of the verse says, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. This is a call to use our words carefully and wisely, as though we are speaking on behalf of God. Peter urges us to recognize the power and responsibility that comes with our speech. This does not mean we should always be quoting scripture in every conversation. Instead, Peter is calling for us to speak with intention, grace, and truth, reflecting God's character in what we say. Whether it's through teaching, preaching, encouraging, or simply speaking with one another, our words should carry the weight of truth and love. When we speak, are we reflecting the heart of God? Do our words build others up, or do they tear down? Speaking with the wisdom of God means we avoid careless speech, gossip, or words that harm. Instead, we aim to speak words that heal and encourage. Serving with the strength from God. The second part of the verse shifts focus from speech to action. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides. This speaks to the way we are called to serve others, not out of our own ability, but through the strength that God provides. Serving can sometimes feel overwhelming or exhausting, especially when we try to do it on our own. But Peter reminds us that our service should come from a place of reliance on God. Whether it's in our communities, churches, or homes, we are to serve in God's strength, not our own. This takes the pressure off of us and shifts our focus to God's power working through us. When we serve others, we are acting as God's hands and feet in the world. Yet, we are not left to do this alone. God equips us with the strength we need to fulfill the work he has set before us. This should be a comfort to anyone who feels inadequate or weary in their service. Glorifying God in everything. Peter concludes the verse with the purpose behind all of this, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. The ultimate goal of both our words and our service is to bring glory to God. Peter reminds us that everything we do, whether speaking or serving, should point others to God. It's not about gaining recognition for ourselves, but about shining a light on the goodness and greatness of God. This idea of glorifying God in everything challenges us to live with intentionality. Our words and deeds should consistently reflect the love, grace, and power of God. Whether we are leading a Bible study, helping a neighbor, or simply having a conversation, our actions should draw people's attention to the God we serve. Peter's doxology at the end of this verse serves as a reminder of God's ultimate authority and majesty. 
All of our efforts, our talents, and our abilities are given to us by God, and they are meant to reflect His glory. Applying this verse to our lives. The message of 1 Peter 4 verse 11 can be applied to many aspects of our daily lives. We need to be mindful of how we use our words. As Christians, our speech should stand out for its wisdom, kindness, and truth. This doesn't mean we have to always say the right thing, but it does mean we should aim to speak in a way that honors God and builds up those around us. We should consider how we serve. It's easy to fall into the trap of trying to do everything in our own strength. But Peter's words remind us to lean on God, trusting that he will provide the strength and energy we need to serve well. Whether we are serving our church, our family, or our community, our actions should reflect God's love and generosity. We must remember that everything we do is for God's glory. It's easy to get caught up in the busyness of life and forget that our purpose as Christians is to point others to God. When we live with this mindset, we are able to find deeper meaning and purpose in our everyday tasks. 1 Peter 4 verse 11 provides a simple yet profound reminder of how we are to live as Christians. Our words and our actions are not just ordinary, they carry the weight of reflecting God's glory to the world. As we speak, we should aim to represent God's truth and love. As we serve, we should rely on God's strength, knowing that He equips us for every task. Ultimately, everything we do should bring praise and honor to God. By living out this verse, we can be a powerful testimony to the world of God's love and power, bringing glory to Him in all things. This is the call of every believer, to live in such a way that our lives point others to Christ, both in what we say and in what we do. Amen. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for Bible studies and more uplifting messages.